we are presenting your house, uh, talking about the, all the rental stuff you'll need in Taipei. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, um, our content will be first is showing what type of housing there is available and what to do during the showings because obviously after you leave the dorm, uh, you'll be going out and doing some house searching yourself. And second part is signing a lease. The third part is the move-in inspection during the lease and the move-out inspection. Okay, so let's get started with the housing types in Taipei. Okay, so because uh, Michael here, he has uh, found two other vendors that are doing uh, shared houses. So um, our part one is uh, solely focused on individual houses. Okay, so the types of houses in, tai in Taipei. So basically, it's like all major uh, international cities. Uh, the normal rent will be apartments with stairs um, and then there's the mediocre apartments that comes with elevators and obviously there's the high rises okay that's the really pretty houses you see as you walk down the streets of Taipei um, just to give you a, a quick info um, in Taiwan we use the pin okay that's about 3.3 square meters or 35.58 square feet and the thing to care about is when you look at the advertisement online for housing is for apartment with stairs, the listing pin is what you get. Okay, so if you see something with 30 pin, you'll get 30 pin inside. However, if you go to apartments or high rises, that's not the case. Okay, because they have they okay. Yeah, because they have the amenities and the common areas, so Basically, you get about 85% uh, or 70%. So, if you see a net listing with a uh, 30 pin, you'll probably end up getting only 21. So, it's not the landlord is trying to rip you off or showing you false information. It's just the way the Taiwan apartment are. Okay. Okay. So, uh, basically, uh, with all the three types of apartment we saw, the first one is the uh, without the elevator. And this is a quick chart. The 100% interior size and then the 85% and the 70 and within the apartment with stairs there's no management fees so you wouldn't have to pay something extra but if you end up renting a really expensive apartment or a high rise usually there's management fees okay and usually with the management fees you get garbage collection you get the gyms and sometimes you have pools and then you also have a building concierge maybe you order something from PC home, Amazon, they deliver. Someone will be there 24-7 to pick up your uh, parcels. Okay. And uh, this is a, a basically a race for the expat friendly areas and Nangang. Uh, because our company mostly service uh, expats from maybe like Wind Power or IBM or basically go all areas because most of them they will have uh, kids who go to American schools or European schools. So these are the top five districts that the expats like. Okay, so uh, we also also listed because obviously Seneca is located in Nangang. So we also listed uh, approximate price for the independent studios, the one bedroom all the way to the four bedrooms. This is the price in NTD. And for these, this part is for the other areas, which is Xinyi, Baan, Okay, so how do you start searching? I'm pretty sure uh, Michael already uh, told you guys the different ways to start searching. So first of all, we have the individual landlords, which you'll see something like this in Chinese. Not sure if you can read it, but basically yellow, red with a phone number, and you call the landlord. And 90% of them can't understand English. So that's the problem you'll meet. The second part is the 591. Um, this is the basically this is the biggest uh, source of housing in Taipei, in the entire Taiwan. However, it's it does have English, but again you'll meet you'll meet the hassle of speaking with landlords or agents that don't understand English. And then later on you can have local agencies and then there's expat agencies. Okay. So basically, uh, giving you guys a brief background knowledge on what to expect when signing a lease in Taipei. So first started, you'll get a, when you see a house that you really like, 
you'll start with an application deposit, okay? So the application deposit is not the normal deposit you pay after renting the house. It's just, usually it's about half a month of the rent. And the purpose of it is to secure the house so the landlord doesn't show any other tenants, potential tenants, okay? Because uh, the housing market in Taipei is really, really fast. If uh, something that is market price usually gets rented out in three days to seven days. So sometimes the landlord will ask you for application deposit. Okay. The second thing is the security deposit. Okay. So in Taiwan, the, the um, government, we have a regulated, the maximum deposit that you pay to any landlord is two months. So if you're renting like a 30K house, the maximum you pay is over uh, 60. If you go over, it's illegal. So just to let you know. And if you're doing something for short-term rentals, sometimes that will work uh, okay with being just a month. Okay? So, yeah, it's just like any other place, the security deposit, just in case there's damages or unpaid rent, etc., etc. Okay? And the lease period, um, usually long-term in Taiwan means over a year. Short-term is within a year or one uh, semester or two semesters. And then you'll see some advertisement with uh, furnished and unfurnished apartments. So, furnish, usually more expensive, it comes with uh, furniture, appliances, so you can just move on with a briefcase. Um, unfurnished, obviously, you have to buy your own furniture. Okay. And uh, basically, besides the rent, um, here's a list of the stuff that the, if you go out and rent a house, you have to pay by yourself. Okay, first off, there's the utilities. Um, water, gas, and electricity. Um, the payments are really simple. You just take the utility bills and go to a 7-Eleven or convenience store, you can pay it. Or if you're really techy, you can set it up on your cell phone with your, um, some apps and you can pay it online there. Okay? So besides this, there's also the cable, TV, and internet. Um, one thing about the cable, TV, and internet that we listed out, because most of the time, uh, the landlord usually has cable and internet registered under their name. Okay, if they do not have cable and internet registered under their name and you want to rent the house, it's okay if you can call like maybe China Telecom to register under your name, but it's going to be a very hassle because they make you pay a deposit and when you move out, you have to take the box and then moped or take a plus all the way to their office and return their equipment and you get your deposit back. So, um, if you ever rent a house, the best way is to ask the landlord, say, okay, please subscribe the cable internet for me, I'll pay the bills. Because if you go uh, by yourself, some of the CH, they may ask for your ARC, they may ask for your passport and stuff, so it's really a hassle. Okay. And also, the building management fees we talked about, um, it could be paid by the tenant or landlord, depending on the negotiation. So. Basically, uh, it'll depend. If you rent an elevator, you'll have management fees. But if you rent with stairs, usually there's no management fees. Okay. And the last thing is a normal wear and tear. So light bulbs, water filters, ACs, etc., etc., is what the tenant pays. Okay. So after you uh, check all the listings and everything, and find something you really like, then we proceed on to signing the lease. Okay. Um, in Taiwan, there's uh, three types of leases, okay? The first type is the bookstore lease, okay? So it looks like this. So some of the landlords, they go to a convenience store, and they buy this lease and tell you to sign it. And it's all in Chinese, and you probably want to take it home to read what's going on here. So it's easily, it's legal, it's easily accessible, but the cons is, is Chinese. And some of the terms may be handwritten, okay? So if you're not familiar with Chinese, you're going to have some discussion with the landlord and they write something and you have to Google it and stuff, so sort of a hassle. The second type is the government leases. So our government has a very professional leases. It's completely legal up to with the newest laws you can find online. But the cons is it's extremely lengthy and it's difficult to read because it's not really tailored to normal rental. They have like Chinese and English equivalents and it's a lot of law inside. Okay. So the third type, um, I think uh, most of the agencies or uh, you'll find that uh, services expats, they have tailored leases. So 
the pros is easier to understand and someone is there to explain for you. The con is uh, every company's lease is a bit different. But the important thing is all the companies, they abide to the government laws. So there's no deposit over two months, there's no penalty over one month, so basically you're protected. Okay, okay so uh, basically uh, what to do when renting and paying a lease. So you have everything figured out. We start off with uh, when signing the contract, you pay up a two month deposit. Okay, and one month rent. So basically, if you see a house has 30k, you have to have 90k prepared. Two months goes to the deposit, and one month goes to the first month rent. Okay, and just to a little heads up for signing the lease, um, please specify the size and spec of the auxiliary equipments you're asking from landlord, because we have some expats that ask the landlord for a TV. And the landlord provides a 20 inch TV. It's like just like a computer monitor and the and it was like, question mark, question mark. So, um, best to say, if, if the landlord agrees to give you some, there may be a fridge, a TV, make sure to have the size, because it's gonna be a hassle if you have different expectations on appliances, okay? And the second part, um, the rental payments, uh, basically uh, in Taiwan, we don't, you, you can't use your visa for payments, but basically other like uh, bank transfers, cash, or checks, but most of you probably won't be using checks, but uh, for bank transfers, um, a small reminder is just to wire to the landlord's bank account. Okay, so if you're signing with Steven, don't wire to Michael's bank account, because uh, that's sort of like maybe one day I'll be like, oh, I didn't get your rent. So make sure you check the landlord's bank account and only wire to them, okay? And then there's a the cash, pay directly to a landlord. Um, some landlords, they may ask this cash, mostly our elder ones, they don't have bank accounts that they like to come around and walk by and say, hi, hi Michael, this month's rent, yep, give me cash. Okay, it's okay, it's, it's perfectly normal in Taipei in the normal apartments, but make sure to get a receipt or sign somewhere on the lease that you have paid the rent because usually after three or four months or even half a year, you'll forget which month you paid and which month the landlord has received. Okay? And lastly, uh, before signing the contract, just make sure uh, this is uh, what a normal uh, land deed in Taiwan looks like. Okay? So there's only three columns to make sure. First of all, there's like the ID column, who owns their property. Second is the address, which you can see on the plates on the, the size of the house. Lastly, this is, I think it's quite important, some people may miss it, but it's really meant is the ownership, okay? Some of the houses, they have, landlord have full ownership, but some houses, the landlord, they only have 20% ownership. So if you sign a house with a 20% ownership, make sure ask for the 80% ownership authorization note, because if Michael and I own a house, but then uh, when he comes to rent it, only I agree, but Michael doesn't agree, the lease will not be legal. So just make sure if it's uh, one over one, that means 100% ownership. Okay. And lastly, this is uh, the Taiwanese ID, so make sure the name matches here, the ID matches here, and it's 100%, then you're safe. Okay. Uh, also, some rent payments and ownership. Uh, normally, some landlord may ask for notarization, guarantors, or co-signers. Okay, so. But the notarization is, the landlord is really scared, so they want the government to notarize this contract. So for this, the fee is paid by both the landlord and the tenant, okay? And secondly, I think this is the most common problem is the guarantors. So the landlord say, okay, uh, I'm willing to rent to you, but you're not Taiwanese, and I don't know what happens if you go leave the country. Can you find me a local guarantor? Okay. But that's gonna be uh, quite hard for you to find because I'm pretty sure not many people will be willing to guarantee the entire house rental for you. If maybe a fire happens, maybe you don't get, uh, you run and then he has to pay all your rent. So basically, uh, guarantee and authorization, you'll meet a lot. So the best way is to just tell the landlord said, uh, you're, you're guaranteed in your deposit, your two month deposit, because yeah, it's really hard to find the guarantee in our cases. 
Okay. And lastly, uh, early termination. Uh, this is a must check for all the leases uh, because sometimes stuff happens, you have to leave. And just for your information, the government policy is one month penalty max. So if you leave, if you sign a lease in January and you leave midway, and the landlord asks for a two month penalty, it's illegal. So just make sure you know what you're getting into. When landlord says, uh, the lease says two month penalty, tell them that's illegal. But sometimes the landlord will still want a two month penalty. And yeah, because uh, before uh, 2017, there's no restriction on the penalty. So some of the landlord, their information is still a bit behind, and they will be asking for two month penalty. Okay, uh, after signing the contract, you'll be, before you move in, um, there's always a cleaning. So in Taiwan, basically, uh, how you receive is how you return. So if the landlord cleans it, and you get the house, and when you return the house, you can just clean it. But if you do ask for very professional cleaning, the landlord will may ask the same when you move out. So just, if you want to really clean, ask her to professional clean. But when you hand over the house back to them, it has to be really clean as well. So this is a cleaning subjective, so just make sure if it's a landlord clean or professional clean. Okay, and after signing the lease, uh, usually, some of the landlord, they have the move-in inspection after signing the lease. They check the place, everything. Um, some of the move-in inspection may be a couple days after. So let's check what you have to do with inspecting the apartment. Okay, the first of all, yeah, the basic, make sure everything works, hot water, everything, toilet, college, okay? And if you have any, uh, see any visible damage, make sure to take a photo of it because the landlord will be on you when you move out and if anything's broken, you don't have a photo to send to them, they'll be asking you to pay for the repairs. Yeah, so make sure to take uh, photos and videos. Yeah. Uh, another thing is the utilities needs to be prorated. So all the cost of the electricity, everything, let's say you move in on the 15th of June. So all the electricity, all the utilities must be paid off and you'll be start paying after the 50. So make sure all the rates are prorated. And in Taiwan, um, there's a water meter, it's on the rooftop. Electricity meter, it's on the first floor of basement. And the natural gas. So this this unit is usually in the balcony, it's indoors. Yeah. So if you want to prorate the UTs, you have to go and check. Jot down the numbers, jot down the numbers, and call the utility company to prorate. That is if you do the transaction all by yourself. Okay. And during the lease, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you'll be getting bills and just pay at the convenience store. The only with the exception with is the gas, because the gas meter is inside your unit, and you don't want people being inside your unit every couple of months. So usually you'll see a red slip by the front door, and then just fill out your floor number and the gas number, and it will be built according to what you fill out. Okay, and during the lease, if anything breaks down, uh, usually what you do is take a photo of the model number, record the video, and send to the landlord. And in Taiwan, unless it's a really nice landlord, uh, expect delays on repairs. It's, they're not gonna, like, uh, one of my uh, landlord's, uh, my tenant's uh, AC just broke down, uh, to just this morning. And I called uh, the company and they had the Dragon Festival over the weekend. And the repairs can only come in next Monday. And I had to tell my tenant that. And he's like, it's born hot air in my living room. But it's not something we can help. So um, usually the repairs, um, landlord has to go communicate and there's also the holidays. So usually expect some delays, okay? And lastly, uh, for the maintenance, the AC maintenance is pretty normal, it's normally on the tenant. So what we suggest you to do is before moving in or before you renew the lease, ask the landlord to do it. So you can save some money so you don't have to go clean it yourself. Okay, 
Okay? And if everything's done and you're moving out, uh, whether it's lease expiration or early termination, just clean, move out belongings, provide utilities, and make sure your security deposit is back by a certain time. So most of the landlords uh, try to, on your contract, try to tell the landlord to give you cash back. Because if you uh, say, if it's, why are you back within three days, the landlord will, after you leave, um, he or she will go inspect the house and find something that's broken and take a picture and say, oops, we're deducting 5000 from your deposit. So the best way is to ask the landlord to bring cash, um, do the move out inspection on the spot, and just make sure everything is signed and return and you get your money back. Okay. So um, after that uh, quick tutorial on how to rent a house, I'm pretty sure none of you want to go through all that process, right? Because it's very, you're, in a, you're here to study, you're here to do work, you're here not to figure out how to rent a house and make sure you understand everything and not get scammed. So that's where uh, we come to play. So basically, uh, we're, we're, the, we're mostly expat rentals, and but our company is really focused on the top end expats. So usually we do the 30K to 500K units. Okay, uh, we do residential, commercial, and storefront. Okay. So basically you can Google your house online to figure out who we are. And that's me. Uh, this is a uh, pilot from Tiger Air. So found in the house. Yeah. So these are the our clients. Uh, basically all the Fortune 500, all the American School, all the uh, wind power, and the hotels and everything. Um, we have service them before um, because uh, yeah, we have a listing of very nice houses. So the most important thing we do is because we have the complete SLP for renting house. So you, when you want to rent with us, basically we do three showings, signing the contract, we do the inspection for you, we do the follow-up repair services, and we do the move-out inspection for you. So just pay your agent fee and all the Part one to part five, you can ignore. So, so um, we're pretty transparent. Um, all our application deposits will have uh, bilingual uh, leases on here. So, um, make sure all the how much is the rent per month, what's expected, what's included in the rent, and we'll do all the move-in procedure for you. So, basically. Uh, Every photo, so if anything damages, even if you lose the photos, we'll still have backups for you. And our lease is uh, bilingual, and we send the lease to you before signing. And you can check if there's anything you want to change. We'll tailor make the uh, lease agreement for you. And lastly, when we move out, um, we even have a termination form just to make sure uh, the landlord signs saying that they can't come back to you and say, oh, you broke this, you broke that. Basically, anything under here is we have pen and paper for every part of the lease. 